Greetings, royal family. Happy Monday. It is June the 29th, right? 2020. So hopefully you guys have seen the 2020 BET Awards. I have offi I've, I've officially renamed this BT Awards to the Black People Awards. You win, I win, he win, she win at the Black People Awards. The Black People Awards. Okay, okay, let me calm down. So, I want you guys to drop your comments during the broadcast. Be sure to like the video as well and share the video so it creates a good dialogue. Now, it took me a little bit longer than usual to put this uh, review or recap out because what I did was have a round table discussion like kitchen table talk with the squad so there were a couple of questions that they posed and i thought they were interesting so i'm going to incorporate that into my commentary but the bet awards hosted by miss amanda seals i think she did a great job given the circumstances um yeah of the show being filmed virtually uh, we open up, I'm just going to get right into it with, with Chuck D and Flavor Flav of the group Public Enema, Public Enema, Public Enemy. Um, they opened the show with like a remix version, like with updated lyrics of their 1989 song, Fight the Power, Fight the Powers That Be. What I liked about this, a few things, a couple of things. Number one, I was wondering if Flavor Flav and Chuck D were going to make up and Flavor Flav was even going to be performing. So obviously, yes, right? Nas was a part of this uh, performance. Black Thought, okay? I love Black Thought. Rhapsody, Jahi, Young G, not Young G, YG. Sorry, I had a lot of iced coffee. I wanted my energy to be high for this, okay? So they were all incorporated into this into this performance. And what's interesting is, right, like this song came out in 1989. Very popular song, been featured in many movies, many documentaries, and it is still very relevant today. I enjoyed it. Um, it was just all black everything. Like, I, 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 it's so much that I want to say, but I'm trying to stick to my notes. So just bear with me, y'all, because I'm real excited, okay? Um, yeah, so what do you guys think about the public enemy performance, the performance opening up the show, Nas, Black Thought, I, I, a Rhapsody, Jahi, I thought that was so great, or is it Jahai? I might be saying it wrong, either way, you know what I'm talking about. So after public enemies, a powerful performance, our hostess with the mostest, Amanda Seals, she delivered a brief monologue. She addressed racism. I knew she was going to be, I don't want to say problematic, but I knew she was going to push the line with the jokes. Is it me or did it seem like BET said this year, look, you guys have creative freedom to express yourself however you choose because there was a lot, a lot, even within the performances. So Amanda Seals, anyway, she opened up her monologue um, saying that folks always say that all she does is ever talk about race. She said, well, listen, I would love to talk about regular everyday, everyday things, but racism always beats me to it. For instance, candy. Who doesn't like candy? But whenever I try to think about Skittles, I remember Trayvon Martin. I would love to talk about ice cream. It's a delicious treat. But each time I do, I am reminded of Botham John. Who doesn't appreciate some shut-eye? Man, I had a nap in 2015 that was so good, it felt like black Jesus tucked me in. I still talk about it to this day. But that's a wrap because now I can't even dream of speaking about sleeping knowing Breonna Taylor's killers have not been arrested. So this was part of her, her monologue. So she said, look, when, when I say I got time, when I say I don't have time, I'm on my trampoline, I meant that. Because give it a minute and racism is going to take the bounce out of that too. Because she did a video on Instagram where she was jumping on her trampoline. And she was basically saying in the video, you know, I don't have time to educate people about racism. You know, if I can educate myself about racism, you can do the same thing. Like, it's not up to me 
to educate my white friends about racism. So that's, that's what she's referencing when she's talking about bouncing on her trampoline. So I, I you know, I wasn't surprised that she took this approach in her opening uh, monologue. Um, it just seemed a little bit weird because there was no exp like audience expression, but that's okay. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I don't want to get off topic because there's so many things that I want to say. I think Amanda Seals looked great. I think she did great. Uh, like I said, given the circumstances, I guess there was production set up in her house. She had a green screen. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at it. Okay. Then we move on. I'm going to be all over the place. Um, Beyonce was awarded with the humanitarian award and this was presented to her by Dr. Okay. Michelle Obama, because she did receive her PhD not too long ago. So we are going to address her appropriately. So, you know, she just expressed how she loves Beyonce. She's so inspiring and just, just, you know, awed over her or, or gave her her praise, gave her her flowers while she's here. So Again, Beyonce got the humanitarian award. Uh, Tyler Perry was speaking as well when they ran the little, what do you call that? Like the little trailer or whatever before Beyonce gave her acceptance speech. And um, Beyonce, she dedicated her award to the Black Lives Matter movement. So she said in her speech, your voices are being heard and you're proving to our ancestors that their struggles were not in vain. We have one more thing we have to do, and that is to vote. I'm encouraging you to continue to take action, continue to change and dismantle a racist and unequal system. We have to continue to do this together, to fight for each other and lift each other up. There are people banking on us staying at home during local elections and primaries. We have to vote like our life depends on it because it does. Very great speech, you know. Um, in my opinion, as far as Beyonce receiving this award, right? Um, to me, this is my opinion. You don't have to agree. Beyonce proves she's one of many, but we're talking about Beyonce, right? So Beyonce proves that work definitely can be done behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? And it can still have a powerful impact. You know, a lot of uh, celebrities or public figures have been criticized heavily recently um, because some people feel like, you know, this is a gimmick or, oh, you know, like I said, this is a gimmick and they're doing it for clout or show. This proves that you can still be behind the scenes and make a impact. Like I said, you know, she doesn't have anything to prove to anyone. You understand what I'm saying? And this goes for anyone, anyone that does any sort of philanthropy. You know what I'm saying? There are people who benefit from philanthropy. And to me, that's one of the most important things, right? Whether you are doing it for what people may think for show at the receiving end of your kind heartedness and your, your, your philanthropic duties, someone is benefiting from it, right? There's someone who may not have money to go to college and because a rapper or actor or a a nurse a doctor or a teacher decides to donate to that particular person or group of people that child or that person is benefiting right they didn't have money for college now they do i just think that that's the most important thing that people are being helped like does it matter who it's coming from how it's done how much or how little quote unquote people think a celebrity is giving, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it. People are entitled to their opinion, but I tend to look at it a little bit differently sometimes. Like, right. Is it not important that somebody is on the receiving end of anyone's philanthropy? I just feel like people do the work on your own terms and just do it with a pure heart. Right. I don't know. I'm going off on a tangent. Moving along. Let me know what you think. I mean, I'm not knocking anybody for having an opinion about how someone chooses to help. That's not what I'm saying. But is it, isn't it it more important that there is somebody on the receiving end of that help, right? That's my point that I'm making. 
Let me know what you think. If you disagree, you can disagree respectfully. All right, let's move it along. So as far as the performances are concerned, right? We saw Alicia Keys, Chloe and Halle, The Baby, D Smoke, Jen, Lord, Jennifer Hudson, John Legend, Jonathan McReynolds, Kane Brown, Lil Wayne, Megan The Stallion, okay? Roddy Rich, Sir, Summer Walker, Usher, and Wayne Brady. Now let's talk about uh, the baby's performance, right? Uh, with Roddy Rich. Am I saying his name right? Um, they they performed this the song Rockstar. Uh, okay, this is where kitchen table talk got a little heavy. Okay, now in the opening scene of this performance, it opened up with a close up of the baby right on the ground with his face on the pavement. His face was against the pavement, and he was rapping. Uh, the new Black Lives Matter intro, I guess you can consider it, to the song Rockstar. Um, like, they altered the lyrics. You, you get what I'm saying? Anyway, so as the camera was slowly pulling back, right, it revealed that there was a police officer with his knee on the baby's neck. And obviously, that's a reference to the recent killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Here's my question. I'm not going to show that picture because it may trigger some people. Here's the question. Do you think that the baby reenacting what happened to George Floyd is an attempt to normalize trauma? Let me ask, let me let me repeat that. The baby reenacting what happened to George Floyd, you know, in in the baby's performance during the awards is seeing that or showing that, doing that, the baby doing that, is that an attempt, whether it's his attempt or who, the powers that be, is it an attempt to normalize trauma? Do you think people seeing that is perpetuating this notion that black trauma is oftentimes normalized? Now, I, I, I ask this because this was one of the critiques that was presented by one of my friends during our kitchen table talk. So. Let me know what you think. Same question for Alicia Keys, because Alicia Keys, she performed. This was also brought up during Kitchen Table Talk. Alicia Keys, her performance, she performed uh, Perfect Way to Die. Is that the name of the song? And she was singing at a piano on an empty street. And when her performance ended, the camera pulled back and showed a list of the names of the black men and women who have been killed while in police custody. So you see the names of these individuals written on the pavement. Again, is that an, is that normalizing trauma, seeing that? I'm not going to give my answer. I, it's just a question that was posed. You know, kitchen table talk is not for everybody's ears. So I really want to get your feedback on that. All right. Alicia Keys looked beautiful during her performance. She did a good job. As far as the baby and Roddy Rich, I did like their performance too. I don't think there was anyone's performance that I did not like. Okay, let me not let me not ramble on because <laughs> y'all know how I get those who are used to me in my commentary. Little Wayne, he paid tribute to his friend Kobe Bryant. I liked his performance. Uh, Wayne Brady, he honored Little Richard. Um, Wayne Brady received a lot of criticism as well. I, I, it was good. I mean, Wayne Brady gives what Wayne Brady gives. You know, I, I knew what to kind of expect from him, and he gave me what I expected. You know, Wayne Brady is like a showboy. You know what I mean? Like, he likes dancing, singing. He likes the theatrics, physical comedy. So this was right up his, his alley, in my opinion. Um, as far as the list of winners, Lizzo, she received the award for Best Female R&B and pop artists. Her acceptance speech, I think, was well articulated. Um, I love the fact that she was standing in her home in this ensemble, okay? And in the background, you see her photo of herself. I love it. She mentioned going from being in the audience to performing last year. And she's, you know, she obviously won this year. And even though she didn't win last year or the year prior to that, she said she still felt like a winner. And she showed love to all of the ladies who were nominated in this category with her. So very, very gracious, gracious speech. I liked it. Uh, Chris Brown, 
he won for best male R and B pop artist. Um, who else? I don't want to go too far into the, uh, to the categories or whatever. Uh, best collaboration. Chris Brown also won for that. Um, best hip hop artist, the baby best female hip hop artist, Maggie. Okay. Now let me tell you something. I love me some Meg. Okay. I, I, she's like, she doesn't bother anybody. She minds her business. She does. She just does what she needs to do. I'm totally here for it, Meg. You go girl. Congratulations. Um, she also won for viewers choice award. I think it is right. Viewers choice award. Anyway, uh, video of the year was DJ Khaled featuring Nip Nipsey Hussle and John Legend. Uh, Tiana Taylor, she won for video director of the year. I thought that was pretty dope. Congratulations to her on her pregnancy. Roddy Rich is best new artist. Album of the year, Roddy Rich. Um, Kirk Franklin won for, won the Dr. Bobby Jones best gospel inspirational award. It's usually like that at the BET Awards, right? It's either Yolanda Adams, Kirk Franklin, um, or uh, what's her name? Dang, Cora from the Tyler Perry plays and shows. What What is her name, y'all? Forgive me. Take me to the king. Truth is, I'm tired. I can't remember her name. That's so bad. But anyway, congratulations to Kirk Franklin. Uh, best actress, Issa Rae, be best actor, Michael B. Jordan. Um... Marche Martin, Young Stars Award. Now, see, why they was roasting her about her wig, saying that her veneers were fake. That girl is, what, 14, 15 years old? So she she responded with a video, um, and she was acting like she was crying, and then she wiped her, she act, she wiped her tears with a $100 bill, act like she was blowing her nose. She took her retainer out to show that she was not, she doesn't have any veneers. And then she got in the camera and said, we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know? So I thought that that was a sarcastic uh, response. You know, she wasn't derogatory, even though some people felt that that was, that was tasteless of her to blow her nose in a hundred dollar bill because it's almost as if she's showing off her money. Here's what I never, I never understand this. When someone attacks someone's looks, or whatever, right? They make fun of them. They, 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 they try to roast them. And then the person claps back. Why is it usually that the person who claps back is often heavily criticized? Everybody has a right to defend themselves. Anyway, I, I ain't going to stay stuck on that. So congratulations to Marche, Marche Martin, Marche Martin. Uh, who else? Queen and Slim won for best movie sportsman of the year, Simone Biles. Sports man, sports woman of the year, excuse me, Simone Biles. Sports man of the year, LeBron James. I'm trying to hurry up and get through this because I want to get to the shenanigans. So bear with me because not everybody watched the award show. So they may not have Googled to see who won what or they probably don't want to read through everything. So I'm running it down for y'all. But hang tight because I'm going to get to the shenanigans after this. All right, let me put my news reporter wig back on. The BET Her Award. Beyonce and Blue, featuring Blue Ivy, Wizkid, and St. John, brown skin girl. First of all, shout out to Blue Ivy. Is she the is she the youngest BET Award recipient? Shout out to Baby Blue Ivy. Okay, Meg Viewers Choice Award, Best International Act, Burna Boy from Nigeria, who is a very handsome man. His award was he was uh, introduced by um, Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell presented him with the with the award. She looks great. Good to see her. Uh, Viewer's Choice Award, Best New International Act, Shasha from Zimbabwe. All right. Now, let's get to the carrying on. Okay, first of all, why do I still have this picture up of Meg? First of all, y'all, <laughs> Amanda Seals did do a good job. Uh, when she did the um, cypher, like she was acting like she was in Rap City, on Rap City, uh, the Rhapsody background, you know, when Tigger used to be in the basement or whatever, and they would go into the booth and his guests would freestyle. That was funny. Um, I liked the little skit that was done with the Karens where Amanda Seal was acting like she was a Karen and she snatched her wig off and the other three Karens. 
were like, oh my God, she's a black, you know, it, it, it was funny. You know what I'm saying? Meg the Stallion, listen, listen to me. Meg the Stallion, I really think did an excellent job, right? I, I, what more can I say, good sis? Where's my other picture of Megan the Stallion? I probably deleted it, but whatever, you see this. Meg the Stallion, she gave us Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. We don't need another hero. Remember that movie with Tina Turner? California Love. Did you guys catch that reference? See, I caught that. Remember the movie, the video, not the movie, with Tupac and Dr. Dre, California Love? They also tried to like, you know, pay a little homage to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, right? Did y'all catch that? I was, I couldn't have been the only one. So she gave us Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, California Love, West Coast rap inspired production. This was a whole music video out here, okay? And this was her first, I think this was her first BET Awards uh, performance. And she walked away with Best Female Hip Hop Artist as well as the Viewer's Choice Award. Bravo, Megan, bravo. I loved her energy. I loved the little details in her presentation. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. So she did a very good job. So congratulations to our little sister, Megan the Stallion. Now, Chloe and Hallie, they did a good job, I, I thought. You know, I enjoyed their performance. I like, they're young, you know, so I like to see young artists coming up, you know, doing their thing. I enjoyed their performance, I did. Uh, it was fun, it was cute. I like how their voices complement one another. Cause vocally, I'm a, I'm a big stickler for vocals. So vocally they're, especially in the first performance that they did uh, when they were in all black, it showed, I don't even know them apart. I know one of them has a mole on their face, but I wasn't that close to the TV to be able to see. So the one that was singing in that falsetto, you know what I'm saying? That high pitch, they just, their voices complement each other. They, they, they know what they're doing. Now I want to say something. I noticed something during the first song that seemed a bit dark, like in the visuals, right? I'll stop there, but did anyone see anything that seemed a bit dark other than the fact that they were dressed in black? But just the, no? Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm doing too much. Um, but congrats to them, though. I like their performance. The second song, when they were all in white, I noticed that one of them had the long strings on her sleeve. And when she was, you know, giving choreo, because they dance, they don't just sing and stand there. They give us choreo. So when she was doing her choreography, I was worried that like the strings was going to get tangled or slap the other one. But these are all pre-recorded performances, so which is a good thing. All right, let's move on. Honey, listen to me and listen to me good. This girl right here, son, this girl right here, this is one of my favorite vocalists alive you know no one supersedes nippy this girl lord jennifer hudson this performance meant a lot to me drama dramatic alert melodrama alert because she sang the song young gifted and black which is a song originally performed by nina simone back in the 50s when I was a young girl, I was introduced to this song at a very young age, probably like 10 or 11 maybe. And then in high school, I was in a upward bound program and one of the teachers in the program, she was an English teacher and she introduced the class to this song and we talked about it and we had to write like an essay about it, but I had already heard the song and it was just like normal, you know what I mean? To me, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. But the way that she articulated how this song, what this song meant to her and I heard it, it just, it was just beautiful. So this took me back and of all the people to sang with the stank on it, this song, Jennifer Hudson sang the song. So a little bit of history there as far as, you know, my upbringing. So this song is not new to me at all. And when I tell you that Jennifer Hudson sang the young, gifted, and black off of me, I was old. 
What's the opposite of gifted? Artless and pale. <laughs> After she was done. Woo, what a powerful, powerful performance. And again, this song is a song that I learned or heard at a young age and then learned what it meant to someone else when I was in high school. And of course, you know, as you get older, you understand the importance of this song. It's pretty much a uplifting song. It's a positive affirmation to instill confidence in black children, people, young, to be young, gifted, and black. But Jennifer Hudson, like I said, she sang the young, gifted, and black off of me. Look, look at her. She, Jennifer Hudson's voice is so loud in a good way that she knows that. Like, let me pull this mic away. Look, look how the people in the background are looking. They're like, girl, she did a phenomenal job. Then right after the performance, right? The commercial for the movie respect was uh, aired, like the little trailer, which stars Jennifer Hudson portraying uh, Aretha Franklin. I was like, Lord, her, her, her thoke, not throat, but she got a thoke. It's like it was kissed by the most high, right? And, and then he told her, go and sing so good that black people will throw their shoes at you. <laughs> I wanted to throw my shoes at the TV. Like, you know, in our culture, that's a compliment. Somebody like, oh, I want to throw my shoes at the stage. You know what I'm saying? But baby, Jennifer Hudson, and she does it so effortlessly. Like she started out on the piano. Like I can go on and on about this performance, but I won't. Her, that voice, she's my kind of singer. She got the stank on it. You know what I'm saying? All right, let me move on. I don't want to sound long-winded. Make sure you're liking the video and dropping your comments. How long I've been on here? About 26 minutes. All right, I'm almost done. Now, this this uh, this was a little bit mm, Usher and Summer Walker, right? Now, see, Usher made me nervous when he violated the six-feet social distancing rule, the six-foot social distancing rule. At first, Summer Walker was performing, and then it panned to Usher performing, and they were like, you know, ways apart. He was on his separate side. She was on her separate side. Then he started walking over. I was like, oh, no, what's going on? Why are you not practicing social distancing? Like, he, you know what, never mind. Let me, let me quit while I'm ahead. Question, though. I kept thinking about this all day yesterday. Help me out, y'all. Who does Summer Walker remind you of vocally? Right? Her voice reminds me of someone, but I can't put my finger on it. So maybe like if one of you guys mentions someone, it'll come to me. But I loved her performance. Vocally, she did great. Um, her album was pretty good. I did get a chance to listen to it uh, here and there. Not every song, but what I've heard so far was really good. This performance was good. Vo uh, vocally, Usher did great. He just needed to back up. Go back on your side of the studio. I just... I don't know. I, it just made me nervous. Anywho, tell me what you think. All right, now, speaking of speaking of Holland and 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 Thoke, Kiara shared and Karen Clark shared. They closed out the show. I think anyway. That's when my DVR cut off. Um, as they usually do, they gave a beautiful performance. I love seeing mother and daughter perform. Congratulations to Kiara. She was recently uh, became recently engaged. Um, it's good to see the legend, Miss Karen Clark Sheard, still with us. I, they did great. I thought their performance was beautiful. But they, to me, they always give beautiful performances. I like them. Um, I was hoping, I'm going to be honest, I was hoping for like a, 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 a more upbeat song. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And also, I didn't, I wish they wouldn't have wore all black. But whatever. You never know. You never know. I'm not judging at all. Uh, also, what I didn't care for was the lighting. I'm watching it and it's just flashing, flashing, flashing. At one point, I'm like, wait, I want to see them. Like, I wasn't really feeling the Holy Ghost halogen lamps that they were using for lighting. No, I, again, Miss Karen is a living legend and she deserves top notch lighting. That's just my opinion. <laughs> I'm just clowning y'all. Um, but I think everybody did, did well. I think overall, this was a well produced in my opinion i think it was a well produced well organized virtual event uh, i don't know how much time they had to put this together but I, I think they did well i don't i i wouldn't be opposed to this being the format for the show going forward to be honest with you because 
if we are going to get performances like what Jennifer Hudson did, what what uh, Meg Thee Stallion did, Meg Thee Stallion gave us a whole music video. You know, a lot of these artists, Alicia Keys, a lot of these artists got the opportunity to basically put together a performance in the manner that they chose. So I think, and then you got to think about editing. So there's no slip ups or mistakes that you would find in a live show, right? So again, I wouldn't be opposed to this being the format for the show going uh, forward. Um, one of the things that did seem awkward at first was there was no applause, right? Like at the end of each performance or when the nominees were uh, mentioned, you know what I mean? And that's only because we've been conditioned to hear applause like after an acceptance uh, speech or performance. It's just an observation. At first it was kind of like, okay, the person ended their performance and you didn't hear any applause or hooping and hollering. But that's just, that's a small thing. Um, another thing, this award show was a little bit heavy, right? And I expected that, honestly, because of what's taking place socially, right? You, you can't turn the TV on or go on social media without being reminded of what is going on in the black community specifically, specifically in the black community socially. Um, I do like that some of the performers took the time to blatantly address the very same issues that we see all over the news, right? And yes, it was heavy at times, but I feel people at times should be uncomfortable. Well, no, people should be uncomfortable with what's going on. Right. Change often comes from people being uncomfortable. Right. Anyway. I just. Uh, during kitchen table talk, there were a few of the participants, few of my homies that did not like the energy of this BET Awards. Right. They said they felt like it was very like it was just very dark, like every single performance reminded us of what is happening or has happened to us as black people. Okay, I, I, I get that. And this is why I asked the question about the baby. Do you feel that his performance is like normalizing black people's trauma? And that's when I said, sometimes people gotta be uncomfortable. Like we, we, we can't, we can't get comfortable with, oh, God, another one of these. Oh, it happens all the time. Oh, somebody else got, you know, killed by the cops or, uh, yeah, that, that, it's no surprise. That happens. That happens. Like, that type of talk is leaning towards it being normal. And I, I'm not opposed to people being uncomfortable with social injustice when it comes to black people in this country. You should be uncomfortable. You, you, right? You should be uncomfortable. You should get to a point where you're tired of it. And that's why we see what's happening now happening. People are tired. They're sick and tired. A chain of events took place and people have had enough, you know? And anyway, I, I just, I just feel like change sometimes comes from people being uncomfortable, you know? Anywho, as far as the two best performances for me, that is going to go to Meg and Jennifer Hudson. I'm telling you, Jennifer Hudson's, oh my God. That girl could sang the paint off the walls. I love her voice. Child, can you imagine if they had Kiki Wyatt there singing along with Jennifer Hudson? Child, that would have been the end of me. Anywho, this video has been long enough. My goodness, 30 minutes. Uh, thank you for rocking out with me. Tell me what you think about the show overall and who were some of your faves. Let me know what you think about the energy of the BET Awards this year. Um, again, some of your favorite looks, some of your favorite performances. How do you think Amanda Seals did as host? Would you like to see award shows like the BET awards and any other award shows be done in this same fashion, viral or vir not viral, virtual, <laughs> viral, virtual. Okay. All right. So Royal family, I'm signing off. Okay. This is, this has been long enough. So I wanted to, I wanted to gather everything for you before I came on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining the broadcast again, like the video comment respectfully, please no profanity or obscene terms in my chat. 
And for those of you who respect that, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to all of the hundreds uh, with a Z of new royal family members. Let me tell you something. In the last 48 hours, you guys have turned out that subscribe button. Make sure you click that notification bell as well and select all so you don't miss out on any of my uploads. And if you haven't done so already, you better come join the party. Hit the subscribe button. Man, I thank you for all of you who support the channel, who comment, who like, and who have subscribed. Royal Family is growing, okay? We're going to have to get a new kingdom, honey, because we don't have any more space in the palace. I know that was so corny. I like corny jokes. All right, I'm signing off, y'all. I love you for watching. And until next time, peace.